Voyager 1, the furthest distant man-made object from Earth, has recently returned a horrific photograph that has both scientists and space enthusiasts astonished. What do these signals imply, and do they portend the end of the Voyager mission? Join us as we investigate every facet of the Voyager's knowledge thus far, as well as the scary message and its implications for the future. Hello and welcome to Z. Please subscribe to our channel and press the bell to receive our daily videos. The Earth is a big and beautiful place, yet it is a speck in comparison to the rest of the universe. Since human technology made it possible to carry rockets and satellites into space, people have had an insatiable desire to learn more about the wonders of the universe. We may think we know the world like the back of our hands when we look up at the night sky. We've captured the stars, documented the planets, and even launched probes deep into space to examine the vast unknown. But what if everything we thought we knew about the cosmos was about to change? The Voyager 1 spacecraft just sent a terrifying image that stunned the whole space industry. That is exactly what scientists are attempting to decipher as they receive strange signals from the spacecraft. Voyager space probes have played a significant part in humanity's effort to investigate the outer planets since the 1970s. The Voyager probes, while not the first of their kind, were planned to journey considerably deeper into our solar system. Because of data gathered by predecessors such as Pioneer 10, the Voyagers were able to resist the radiation encountered around planets such as Jupiter and Saturn. Their primary goal was to take exact images of these large planets utilizing flybys built at NASA's Jet Propulsion Facility. Voyager 1 was outfitted with cutting-edge technology, including a top-of-the-line communication system capable of working beyond our solar system's boundaries. Some of these technologies are vital to the Voyager mission, such as the Casa Grain 12-foot antenna used to send and receive radio waves via NASA's Deep Space Network. In addition to this antenna, this network was specifically designed to ensure that communications from the Voyager space probe could be received from any angle of the Earth's rotation. Voyager has a digital tape recorder with a capacity of 67 megabytes. This was critical because deep space can interfere with signal transmission, and if Voyager is unable to transmit a signal, the saved data can be transmitted later when a direct line of transmission is established, ensuring Voyager stays on course despite the unpredictable radioactive particles found in our solar system's outer regions. Three axis stabilization gyroscopes, 16 high hydrazine thrusters, and a computerized reference instrument were included in the probe. All of these factors work together to keep the probe's radio antenna pointed at Earth, ensuring that we get the important data it sends back to us. Even in the face of uncertain and turbulent deep space conditions, these devices enabled Voyager 1 to keep its antenna pointing towards Earth. Running these equipment and systems for decades, however, requires a consistent supply of energy, whereas past space probes relied on solar panels to absorb solar energy. The Voyager 1 was designed with a specific power supply in mind. Because NASA engineers predicted that Voyager 1 would eventually go beyond the range of sunlight, three radioisotope thermoelectric generators were installed on the probe. Due to its 87-year half-life and slow degradation over time, these generators carried 24 pressurized spheres of plutonium-238, which generated heat that was converted to electricity to power the probe's components at the start of its voyage. The RTGS on Voyager 1 produced around 470 watts of electricity, a value that has decreased by nearly half throughout the course of the probe's 45-year journey. Despite the recent discovery of unexpected signals from Voyager 1, the probe has been consistent and reliable since its launch. The periphery of our solar system appears to be a cold, barren, and gloomy location for a long period, distant from the sun's protecting embrace. Astronomers overlooked the wide space between us and the nearest stars, which was long supposed to be a terrifyingly enormous expanse of emptiness, since they preferred to focus their telescopes on the brilliant masses of our neighboring stars, galaxies, and nebulae. For the past three years, however, these two spacecraft have been bringing back our first glimpses of this strange realm known as interstellar space. 
As the first man-made objects to exit our solar system, they are exploring unexplored territory billions of kilometers away. They have demonstrated that beyond our solar system's boundaries exists an invisible region of chaotic planetary activity. Michelle Bannister, an astronomer at the University of Canterbury in Christchurch, New Zealand, who studies the solar system's outer reaches, says that region of space is very different from the blackness we see with our eyes when we look at different parts of the electromagnetic spectrum. The solar wind, an infinite and intense flow of charged particles known as plasma that originates from the sun, is producing the uproar. This wind collides with a mixture of gas, dust, and cosmic rays in the interstellar medium between star systems. Scientists have pieced together that the interstellar medium is made up of ionized hydrogen atoms, dust, and cosmic rays that interact with thick gas clouds. For more than a century, scientists have used powerful technologies such as radio and X-ray telescopes to study the makeup of the interstellar medium. Because the Sun, its eight planets, and a distant disk of debris known as the Kuiper Belt are all contained within the aliosphere, a massive bubble created by solar wind as the Sun and its planets speed through the galaxy, the precise nature of where stars are born, but its origins beyond our solar system, have remained largely unknown. This bubble acts as an invisible barrier between the interstellar medium and spacecraft, preventing the majority of potentially dangerous cosmic rays and other particles from entering. The aliosphere is also abnormally large, implying that the density of the interstellar medium is lower than expected. The sun glides across space like a boat across water, producing a bow wave, a trailing wake and maybe comet-like tails. However, because the voyages left the aliosphere, no information about the tail was gathered. Scientists have been closely monitoring the Voyager's signal response from this region. However, scientists were taken aback when Voyager 1 began transmitting concerning data during one of the observation cycles. The results suggested unlikely scenarios that were incompatible with conventional interstellar physics theories. According to officials from NASA's Jet Propulsion Laboratory, Voyager 1's Altitude Articulation and Control System, also known as AACS, was in charge of measuring and calculating the orientation of the spacecraft and its antenna to ensure that the probe maintained a direct line to Earth for the best signal transmission and orientation. Scientists were perplexed as to the origin of this terrifying signal and jump data because the probe was still able to observe, gather, and transmit data back to mission control on Earth, indicating that it was functioning normally despite the fact that the data sent back by Voyager 1 was essentially useless due to corruption. It's still incredible that the spaceship has outlived its 45-year design life. Despite having some systems shut down to save power, both Voyager 1 and 2 have reliably relayed data throughout their missions. As Voyager 1 continues its journey 14.5 billion miles from Earth with communication delays of more than 22 hours, it is difficult for mission control to resolve any difficulties that arise after weeks of searching for an answer. NASA subsequently established that the unusual signals returning from Voyager 1 were caused by the double ACS system mistakenly relaying data through a damaged computer. Despite the fact that the data was correct, the corruption caused by the old system resulted in the transmission of trash data back to Earth. While mission controllers initially thought this was an isolated incident, there is widespread speculation that a similar situation could occur again because Voyager may first have encountered some type of cosmic radiation containing charged particles that distorted system commands, causing the switch to the corrupted computer. However, even though they have left the aliosphere, they are still vulnerable to many of our sun's other impacts. Other stars, for example, can view the sun's light with their own eyes. While some comets have orbits that extend all the way to the York Cloud, which is generally thought to be too far away for us to send our own probes, our star's gravity also extends but is content on the aliosphere holding in place the odd cloud despite floating in interstellar spaceport objects continue to orbit the sun. As a result of the mysteries and questions uncovered with each new wave of data from the voyages, scientists are intrigued about what else exists outside of the aliosphere. 
These distant objects have hardly changed since the solar system's birth, and they may hold the key to understanding everything from how planets form to the likelihood of life developing in our universe. Did that pique your interest in interplanetary mysteries? Then subscribe to our channel and join us as we unravel the universe's darkest mysteries. Thank you for your time, and until next time, keep exploring.